Hi everyone! Today we are making some more collagen magic. Today it's going to be jellied pig's feet, one of my dad's all-time favorite recipes. I'm Anita. Welcome back to my channel where I show you how I lost 145 pounds following an animal-based ketogenic diet. Okay, so I am making a dish called, uh, it, well, I grew up knowing it as jellied pig's feet. My parents called it head cheese, but I know it's not head cheese because I think that's slightly something else. Um, they completely took credit for it being a German dish, but uh, I know that in almost every country in the Eastern European bloc, they do this, they make this. I mean, the Ukrainians make it. Serbians, the Polish, every, everybody. They all have uh, pickled pig's feet, jellied pig's feet. There's some other names that I can't pronounce. Uh, Schweinefusen, I think. I don't know. It, it's um, whatever you want to call it, whatever country you think it came from, uh, it is collagen magic. It, you, you get, in the end, you get something that looks like jello with meat in it. And my dad's absolute favorite recipe, he used to sit, he, he used to get a big bowl of it and pour vinegar on it and sit back and he was in heaven. Today, I am wearing his favorite apron. This is my dad's. I, uh, it's one of, one of the most precious things I inherited from my dad <laughs> was this apron uh, amongst a, a bunch of other aprons. but. This is so easy to make. You can make it 100% carnivore. You can add other things to it if you want. My mom used to add uh, cut up carrots and celery in there. Um, I'm not gonna do that. It's just gonna be all pig's feet. Uh, in the store, you will find these uh, are quite economical. Uh, they might say pig, uh, pig's feet, pork hocks, uh, some of them even look like pork shanks, you know, something like this. Uh, this, this is a pork hawk. I have even seen them with like a long, uh, the thin part of the leg with like complete with feet. All of that works in the jellied pig's feet. Doesn't matter if you get it from the top of the leg or the bottom of the leg. It all works. It's all going to gel. It's going to make an amazing dish for carnivores, especially the nose to tail eating. Uh, this is what it. This is what it is. Um, and for those of you who want to get more collagen in your diet, this is one of the ways to do it. And I will link up my other high collagen recipes down below for you, and you can add this one to that collection. So. Uh, I've got my instant pot. Now my parents just, they just boiled something like this for hours on the stove until it was super soft. Then they did the, you know, cutting it up and putting it in the, you know, they had a big aspic mold. Uh, for those of you who were around in the 60s, aspics were big. Um, so that's what they used. I'm just going to use a bowl to mold it. Uh, so let's get started. I'm, I'm going to put this in the instant pot for two hours. This is a, uh, I, you know, it would have been sacrilege to my parents, but uh, I don't have hours and hours and days to make things. I have to do mine a little quicker. Uh, so I've got my instant pot here. I washed these pieces of meat and uh, soaked them for a little while in some uh, cold water, made sure everything was off that I could, you know, and anything that I found there. I'm just going to place these pieces in the Instant Pot. I do have my holder in so that I can uh, easily take the meat out later. Uh, but yeah, just doesn't really matter how they go in. Okay, so I have those in there and we need water. I'm just going to put enough water in to cover the, uh, the meat. Whoops. Okay, I need a little bit more water. I'm going to put in a tablespoon-ish of salt. Oh, and a splash of vinegar. Looks like there's about a tablespoon left in here, so I'm just 
I'll just put that in. And that's it. Like I said, you you know, you can add some vegetables. Uh, my mom used to also put bay leaves in and probably a few other spices and seasonings. But I think this will be enough for what I want to do. Uh, some people do add extra gelatin. I don't think it's really necessary. There's a lot of gelatin in here already that is going to firm everything up. And I, I, I you know, I'm kind of doing this from memory and from a couple of conversations I've had with, uh, with friends uh, who grew up with this as well. Thank you, Melissa, for your advice. Um, so, but I think it, I think it's just, I think it's going to work. I, I don't ever remember my parents adding gelatin to theirs, so I'm going to put this on. So I'm I'm going to cook this for an hour and a half. Okay, so uh, I will be back after it has been in here and cooked. I'm going to let it natural release probably for 15 or 20 minutes. And then I'll bring you all back here so that you can see what I do next to make the jellied pig's feet mold. Okay, so this is all cooked now. I, I poked the pig's feet. So everything is really soft. I'm going to lift the meat out. And uh, this is, can be the tricky part, but should be okay. Basically, I want uh, it to just drain off and cool down a bit. Then I'm going to be cutting it up into bite-sized pieces. So we'll just let that cool down on its own. The bones uh, can be saved in your bone bag and the freezer uh, for a future time that you're going to make uh, bone broth. I, I generally keep my bones separate. I've got a pork bag and a chicken bone bag and a beef bone bag. So I'm gonna grab my pork bone bag. I'm just going to throw all of the bones in this bowl, set it aside, let it cool off before I mix it with my frozen bones. I think I have all the bones. Oh, now that there's no bones, I'm losing all my meat. So basically, I am just going to have all this here and cut it up. It's pretty simple. And you use everything, the cartilage, there's gonna be still some, well, these are hard pieces of cartilage there, so those are gonna go in the bone bag. You just want the soft stuff. I'm gonna save the rest of that in a jar, but uh, I just wanted enough in this bowl to cover the meat. And uh, then this is going to go into the refrigerator overnight. And uh, it, if all goes well, tomorrow, this will be set like jello. And then you just cut it up, put it in a bowl, add some vinegar and enjoy. Right, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna work. So there will be a layer of fat on top and we'll scrape that off. And uh, so we will see you uh, tomorrow when it's uh, all set and show you what the end result is. Okay, we're back. We have our jellied pig's feet. A uh, couple of things I wanna mention that would probably have made things a bit easier for me. Um, one is that I have seen a whole bunch of pictures online where the jellied pig's feet is cut up into nice little squares. And I could have done that just by pouring this whole mixture into a pan like this and then cutting it up. I'll show you a pic picture of what that looks like. Um, so that was one thing. The other thing was a, a couple of hours after I went to check on it in the fridge last night and I realized I had made a, another rookie error and I didn't have my liquid level quite high enough. As the fat started to congeal on the top, I could see that the meat level was above the fat level. That makes it just hard to scrape the, you know, the fat off of this. Um, so what I did is I did, because I had saved all of the rest of the broth from making this and, um, 
you know, it was in the fridge. I, I heated up a small amount of uh, one of those jars and I poured it on top and that seemed to have done the trick. So now you can see there's the layer of fat and you can't really see much, if any, meat sticking out of that. So I, I salvaged it. I mean, this is a nice thing. It's pretty forgiving. You can do stuff like that. So uh, second rookie mistake, my mom would just be laughing at this right now if she was here. So she had special molds that she poured hers into. And those molds were from Tupperware. I don't know, maybe some of you had those special big round jelly molds and they were designed to uh, release the molded dish uh, afterwards. Uh, there was a, like a lever. I, I don't know, it, they were quite ingenious. You can't get those anymore. Um, and back then they didn't have the silicone mold. So I did it in this glass dish. And now I have no idea whether it's going to pop out. Um, so that's why this might have been a better way to go is to make it in the square pan and cut it into squares. So I'm just going to see what are my chances here. It may just fall apart if I try to do that. So I may end up just scooping this out. Look at that, I can't believe it worked. My parents would be so proud of me right now. I wish they were here to see this. Okay, so the next thing you need is a sharp knife to cut nice slices. They treated this like it was the finest cake and they would put it into pie shaped pieces. Okay, I couldn't find my pie slicer. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with a sharp knife. There it is. Okay, so my dad would put vinegar on this, uh, just plain white vinegar. Um, I don't have, I don't think I have any, unfortunately. I'm gonna get some, because I'm gonna be eating this for the next few days. But you just have to, uh, know the amount of collagen in this. Uh, it probably needs a little bit of salt as well. This is a memory straight from my childhood. The only thing that would make it perfect was a little bit of vinegar. So I am going to hunt through the back of my cupboard there to see if I have some or borrow from the kids downstairs. Um, I'm just super thrilled with how easy this is how much collagen you get from it and the uh, the whole thing the whole you know memories of my childhood so I hope that you give this a try let me know what you think uh, I know it's different but I think that uh, I think that most people would like it if they tasted it so thank you so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video